Welcome back to Outdoor Education, y'all. It's been a great week. Happy Earth Day. I know that I was not with you on Wednesday, but I thought we would just take a little bit of time today and celebrate the Earth in our own special way. Now, there are fantastic activities out there that you can do, and I encourage you to go and find something to do outside. But I wanted just to take a little bit of time and celebrate our Earth here that is our schoolyard. We have so many special outdoor learning spaces and I wanna help you reconnect with the things that are growing here and taking place here, even though you're not here. Let's go ahead and start our class fire as we always do, helping to create a place of warmth and kindness. Let's go ahead and put our hands together, ready? One, two, three. And this now starts our journey around campus. We're gonna to go to a bunch of different places to check out what's growing, what's happening, what's changing, and just show you that this space is still here and has amazing things waiting for when you come back. I hope you pick up a little bit of excitement as we go along this journey, whether it's on a little hike or to our garden, and you can learn us a little bit about what's happening here at Mer Merrick Moore as we go. Let's go ahead. All right, y'all, so heading out from our outdoor pavilion, we're gonna head straight over to our gardens, and I wanna start here because a lot of special stuff is happening. So this is the layout to our garden. This is what's been planted so far this year. You can see we've got baby watermelon, summer squash, golden zucchini, a couple of different types of beans, uh, some peas over there. We've got cucumbers over on the left side, uh, mixed green lettuce, uh, radishes in three rows, and okra, carrots, and carrots. And this is what uh, this is what makes up our garden this spring and you can see everybody that's been out to help get this garden going thanks to miss thomas miss connor miss hanlon miss smith miss perry mr wicker miss huckle uh, y'all have put in a fantastic amount of work to get things up and running so thank you thank you thank you all right y'all so this is it this is the one that i was so excited about you can see the rows of radishes first and then the rows of mixed greens lettuce over there and it's only been a few, I don't know, five or six days since we planted, and it's already popping up. I've seriously never been so excited about radishes in my life. I don't particularly like them, but I think that I might now that I'm growing them and I get to try them right out of the earth. So this stuff has grown very quickly. And as we head over, we can see our string bean. Uh, there's just one popping up right down over there and another one right down over there. And we have not so much. I did see, a, I think, a couple of our summer squash are just peeking right out there. So you can see things are starting to grow. Our carrots and our okra, that's going to take a little bit longer. Um, and our watermelon, too, not much has happened there. But I think that's part of the excitement is that everything kind of grows at its own pace. And so while we have the radishes and the lettuce to be excited about now, we'll have other things that we get to be excited about as they start growing in the future. So the space that y'all see behind us, we know it's a very special space because it was just built for us by Blue Cross and Blue Shield and an organization called OutTeach. They put in a huge amount of work and money into this making it a fantastic experiential learning space for us. And I know I've seen Mr. Mullaney have a lot of groups out here, small groups, doing harvesting. I think that uh, Victor, Victor and Edgar have come out and really contributed to the health of the garden. So thanks to those guys and everybody else that is coming out, uh, all the students that have helped to tend it. It is gonna be here for you to help tend in the fall and I just want to say I look forward to that time when we can get our hands back in the dirt. All right, y'all, we're here just right on the other side looking at our native perennial garden. Perennial means that they grow year after year, and these particularly were chosen because they make uh, flowers that bloom uh, different times throughout the year, and so the different bees and butterflies and birds that come to these plants are also gonna help uh, pollinate our garden down there and you can see not much has flowered yet but a lot is growing uh, we do have something called a wand flower uh, right here which is beautiful white and pink flowers so that's growing uh, early now in the season and I think that our rutabecchia or echinacea uh, I think it's our rutabecchia is gonna go ahead and start blooming soon you can see we've just got little buds right here so past that is our little pond and things are coming back to life here. We can see we have the lily pads 
in the middle and everything is just looking really great. And I do have some exciting news. We are gonna be getting some fish to join our pond soon. And that is because we have Elodia deep down in here that helps them breathe. Without that, we couldn't actually have the fish. And so I will definitely show you a video when we add our fish in. So on to the next space. So these little strips of dirt turn into a really special space and that's gonna be starting soon. These are our third grader sunflower beds. Now, the third graders usually plant these beds uh, really late in the spring so that they're ready for the school year to start the, the following next year. Uh, but we're not gonna get a chance to do that. So Mr. Wicker and I came out and we turned over this soil and are getting ready to plant it. But I think just something really interesting to notice is that we actually already have a couple of sunflowers starting to pop up and a fairly large one actually starting to go here that you know nature just kind of does its own thing some of the seeds made it over from last summer uh, and they started growing on their own timeline but this will be planted very soon for y'all third graders so i'm up at the top of the lower field which yeah not a lot is changing and growing here but i did want to point out just one interesting fact uh, it gets really, really wet down in our lower field, as a lot of y'all well know. And that is actually no longer the case. And I'm going to tell you why. So during the winter, when nothing is growing, nothing needs water. And so that water just sits in some low spots. And then soccer and play down there gets all super, super muddy. But in the spring, as things start growing, they need that water. And so it just sucks that water in, all that grass, all the plants down there, and they start using it. And all those puddles just go away. And so it is ready for play. Maybe you'll get up here during the summer and play some soccer or some other games, uh, and we'll play some next year. All right, y'all, on to the next spot. Our next outdoor learning space, we've got a circle down here right outside our pollinator garden. And our pollinator garden currently needs a little bit of work. Our Virginia mint, which was planted, is kind of taking over the space. And with a pollinator garden, you really want different plants, different flowers to be blooming at different times of year. And so we're gonna actually have to go in and pull up some of that Virginia mint and replant so that we can have different things blooming for the birds and the bees and the butterflies throughout the year. Uh, we also have our newest uh, addition to our outdoor learning spaces. We actually didn't have outdoor trash cans until about two months ago. Uh, and we really are thankful for Inside Education over at Duke, a club that has sponsored uh, the ability for us to get these amazing trash and recycling bins. So thank you to them. So this is actually a stop that I didn't plan to take, but our resident red shoulder hawk uh, just swooped out of the trees and I, I kind of came down trying to follow it and get a, a video of it, but wasn't able to. And remembered our, our peaceful creek uh, that I specifically come down to with my third grade, but just wanted to share with y'all. It's a really special and neat place. Uh, the ground is just littered with uh, tulip poplar flowers and you can see the the stream bed is something really special. All right, y'all, I'm really excited about this next space. It is the home of adventurous play here at Merrick Moore. And as uh, y'all come on out, I ask that we wave hello to the trees as they wave back at us. And let's go in and check it out. So as we enter on in, you can see that we've got some play structures that kids have made the last week that we were here at school. Miss y'all. We've got some supplies over there. We've got some boundary lines out there. A ton of where we can play to. We've got our fire circle that we sit around to get our, our class started. And this view right here is just the best as we look up. So the forest classroom is a magical place and not only a place that we use for adventurous play but also we have our fifth graders come out here to do their decomposition labs. So we go around and look at uh, rotting logs and what's inside them and how they're changing uh, and that's something that uh, fifth grade we're not going to get a chance probably to do this year but I encourage you to go out and check it out. Also uh, behind us uh, is the start to our 
trail, our student-built trail. It's about a half mile of trail. And I'm gonna take you on a quick time lapse of that trail hike so you can enjoy it. And here we are at the end of our hiking trail. I hope you enjoyed a hike with me down our student-made hiking trail. It's about a half mile long. We pop out right here at the Nook classroom where small groups come out to do small group reading. There's a little trail that brings us over our rainbow bridge and down to our campfire classroom. Our campfire sessions ended right before we got out of school, y'all. I was so happy we got a chance to learn about how to be campfire safe and what it takes to build a fire and just enjoy reading around the campfire and making s'more berries especially. You all made this such a special space and I'm excited to have us come to it next year. But that is our campfire classroom. So leaving out of our campfire classroom, we come into our orchard area. And I get really excited about this for y'all because we can actually start seeing our orchard coming into bloom. As we look down here, we can see these beautiful white flowers. If you watched my last video, you'll actually know what this is uh, because we took time to say how it's not poison ivy. It is our blackberry or bramble and when it comes out uh, in the spring with these beautiful white flowers uh, and the pollinators, the bee, the butterflies come and pollinate the different flowers and if that happens then we get some really beautiful and uh, delicious blackberries that grow out of these plants. Um, and just a little bit further down we have our blueberry patch and you can see that our blueberries are coming really nicely in here and these three blueberry patches are going to just be stocked full of blueberries if you get a chance to stop by uh, the school in about i don't know um three to four weeks or so you can just come on uh, down and just pop a couple of really ripe blueberries in so we've checked on our berries let's go over to the orchard fruit trees and check and see if anything has started growing on those uh, we've got fig persimmon and pawpaw um, all native uh, or good for North Carolina and I did notice before that our pawpaw tree had a couple of blooms on it flower blooms and you can see maybe right up there we've got one pawpaw flower bloom if you've never tasted a pawpaw it's like this kind of little kidney bean shaped fruit and it tastes kind of like banana and custard combined and you won't find them in the store because they're really hard to transport without getting bad. And so really, um, if anybody knows where to find them other than on a tree, please let me know. But you can pick them right off the tree and they're really delicious. And we also have one of our fig trees that's growing strong. And our persimmon, I'm not gonna lie y'all, I'm a little worried about our persimmon tree. It has an infestation called scales. Now this tree has given us a lot of persimmon over the past couple of years, but you can see on here, these little tiny bumps right here that that's a little insect that it grows uh, using the sap uh, and nutrients of the tree but it's not good for the tree so try to spray a little bit of stuff on it to take the care of those uh, scales is what they're called and get rid of it but only time will tell if the tree will actually survive. All right, y'all, we're gonna take a quick stop into the courtyard area, a place where y'all might have come out and eaten uh, lunch at different times. I've seen many classes, teachers really comfortable bringing out classes out here, which is fantastic. Uh, and then over here, uh, we have our rain garden. 
maybe also known as our Merrick Moore swimming pool. It has rained so much over the last year that this has barely ever been actually empty and dry. You can see we've got some blueberries starting to grow in it, which would be amazing if we could actually get to the blueberries to eat, but maybe they'll just be here for the birds uh, and other critters to get here. Uh, and then we've got some water lilies back over in that corner over there and some horsetail actually, an aquatic horsetail right here growing down here. Uh, and it's just a great place. I know Miss Whaley's class comes out and does their morning uh, out here and just kind of has a sit spot where everybody goes to different spots apart from each other and has kind of their own time before the, the school day starts. And I think that's really special. So great job, Miss Whaley's class. So we're up at our climbing wall. And while it's not a place that naturally grows, it is a place that has grown and changed over the last couple of years uh, at Merrick Moore. And so I wanted to stop in here and show you just kind of a couple of exciting things. Um, we obviously have our benches out here for learning, not just climbing takes place here. Uh, we do have our climbing walls with our safety mats and a newly installed feature. You can see these bolts way up here. Those bolts were just installed right before we left for our climbing class uh, to teach belaying. And I was really excited to get my fifth graders in climbing, learning how to belay off of that. But we'll have to, we'll have to wait for our next group to come through. But this place for you students is always changing, always growing, always getting better to give you the best outdoor experiences possible. Thanks for joining me on that journey, y'all. I know Bear didn't make it with us today. It's actually his birthday, so he stayed home and had fun all day on his own. Um, but if you made it on that whole journey, thank you for joining me and just reconnecting with that space that we all hold really special. And if that was your first time at Merrick Moore, I hope it really gave you a good introduction to all the outdoor learning spaces that we have. And when we think about Earth Day and how we really appreciate the Earth, I think it comes to those little spaces that we connect with, those magic spots. And so I hope you can go out and really connect with a magic spot of your own that you find special. And as we move forward, I cannot wait for the day that we bring our students, our teachers, and our space back together. And when that happens, all will be good. Looking forward to it. See you next week.